What is up YouTube? In this video, we're going to look at a tutorial for Git and GitHub. If you're someone who aspires to become a data engineer, using Git and GitHub version control system is kind of a prerequisite. This also applies to any software engineering job which is out there. Example to look at is while building a software project is it's not only done by a single individual. Usually a software is built using teams. Multiple people kind of work on the same file, same set of line of code. So this is where the collaborative features of any version control system is kind of really important. So it tracks line by line changes of each person. So you can see which person has made changes, which point of time, allow you to track those changes and kind of merge together when everything is final. All right, moving on, let's look at some differences between Git and GitHub. Git is basically the open source technology which is being used as version control here. So this is the technology which kind of maintains and tracks everything in the files. GitHub is a separate platform which allows you to push those repository maintained in Git. Basically, it uses the technology Git, but it allows you to push it on their remote server. So they have a platform in place. You can push your code into their server, which is on remote. That's one of the primary things, but GitHub also has a lot more added on features to it, to the platform. It has a feature of bug tracking, ticket management, project management, etc. cetera. Uh, it also has like a continuous integration feature nowadays with GitHub Actions and all. Uh, also like the pull request feature, you, you basically use it to merge code. So it's kind of standard right now to use Git uh, for any open source project right now. The next step is to set up an environment. Uh, to install Git, so you need to go on to this git stm.com and click on download. Then this will uh, tell you how to do it. Uh, in Windows, it uh, in, in Mac, you can just do it through in Mac, you can just do it through Brew, which is like my preferred method. Homebrew is like a package manager for Mac OS. So you can use this to install. Uh, and then for Windows, I think there these should be in like an installer file. Yeah, so there's a Windows set of file for 64 git um, bit and 32 bit. So I leave a link and then there's like a package manager called winget, you can use it. I don't know how useful will it be to configure. But yeah, uh, definitely use a PowerShell to kind of achieve this uh, installation. So yeah, once you have Git installed, uh, I think you're good to go. So first to check if Git exists, you can just type on Git to see if uh, something comes up and you can see uh, it already like giving me the options I can do using Git library. Once uh, this Git is installed, the next thing is to install uh, VS Code. So VS Code is also very similar. Yeah, so I think it's very easy to install VS Code anywhere. Uh, it's kind of... Uh, very quick so I'll leave a link as well in my notes uh, let me try to build something from scratch like there are multiple options right you can create a local repository and kind of um, pin it to a remote branch like a remote repository and then you can just push it later I kind of prefer it uh, to create a repository first within github so I need to go on to github and then I will create a new a new project so I, I'm gonna create a new repository so so for the repository I'm gonna type the name GitHub tutorial. So yeah, you give a description. Uh, it, this can be a private repository and public repository. And uh, for me, I would choose a public repository for you to look at later on. And then you can always check in like the add readme button. And then you can check a uh, check in like a few things. Um, we can come back to this later, but basically this will create a folder inside of the cloud. You need to remember that this will create a folder inside of the cloud. Uh, Git ignore is basically ignoring some files because you don't want to commit everything. So let's let's come back to this later. Uh, there's a license when you're creating like open source software, there's different type of license you need to check into, like uh, distribution license. Uh, we can also ignore it for some time because this is more, more like um, using the technology. So yeah, my repository name is ready. I'm creating a new project. Basically, this is a new software project I'm creating. So let me create, click on create repository. The next step is actually to kind of clone it in your local so that you can start developing to go onto this green button called code to get the code. You need to clone this repository on your local. There are multiple options. You can use GitHub Client, which is a CLI interface they have. You, you have to use SSH and there's HTTPS. For public uh, public level repository, HTTPS is kind of good enough. For private, I, uh, I think you for now, like lately you need to use SSH. Uh, SSH is a, like a protocol you need to use. So you need to pass in like a, a public key to this GitHub, uh, which basically authenticates. So uh, Let's not to dig deep in this one, but let's just try to start cloning the repository and start working out. All right, so as a first step, you need to open your Visual Studio Code repositories. So yeah, this is where I'm kind of planning to create the 
create my repository. This is basically a folder within my local documents folder. I, I, the next step is for me to kind of clone the repository. So I need to open a terminal. Uh, so Visual Studio Code is kind of has everything in place, so you don't need to go anywhere. So it has a terminal, so you need to don't need to go anywhere. Otherwise, uh, if you're using a terminal or PowerShell, you can uh, just click on terminal and write the commands there. But yeah, for now, let me just clear this window and let me try to do a clone. So git, git clone using this HTTPS URL. Now, now you can see that the project has been cloned. So you can see the same readme file which was there, which is great. Uh, then it automatically picks up. So uh, there are multiple, multiple ways to kind of interact with Git and GitHub. One is using command line. I think this is the, the most straightforward using command line. Visual Studio Code also had has this feature inbuilt. So let me try to make some changes, which is code Nepal jittery code has been cloned. All right, so you can see uh, the changes are being reflected here. So, so the idea is you make changes and you do, you do a commit. So as as you make changes, you do a commit. Um, the commit will take up these changes and kind of save it in the Git repository. So any change you make is kind of, any things you change is being stored one by one. That's the idea. So uh, if I want to see the changes, I can go on to this version control tab on the left and I can double click on readme file and see what changes has occurred, which is this line. So as you can see, I've added a new line in my readme file. This has automatically picked up. So like, the the idea is like you you collaborate like by having some changes in the file one by one and then you kind of commit those changes. So yeah, now that uh, we have made changes, the idea is to kind of in the project you uh, commit these changes onto the Git and then kind of push the changes into the repository. So to understand this further, let's look into uh, another website. Uh, I think it will give you a visual way of understanding how Git is working uh, inherently. So uh, uh, as a first step, let's try to understand what commit is using uh, another website called learning git branching. So I'm gonna leave a link for this as well in my video description, feel free to check it out. Um, it's a visual way of uh, learning git and git commits. So I think it's a good way to, if you wanna get started with. So <clears throat> basically it says a commit in the repository is, is kind of a record of a snapshot. Uh, so basically you're tracking each file, each line in the file. Uh, each commit you are doing, each change you're doing is kind of snapshot of that file you're doing. It's being tracked. So, uh, for example, if we go ahead and commit this file, there's an option, right? Commit. Uh, this change has been tracked into this Git repository and it's like being tracked there. So the commits are actually lightweight because it's basically you're, you're not copying everything together. You're just uh, adding the difference. So like, for example, if I commit, this will only add the difference, which is the, the green line. So this way, this way you can have a history maintained. So let's try to like tr under, try to understand what happens when we do a commit. So, so the way we do a commit is you first need to ch check on, I, I'm going to show it on both hands. So you first need to check uh, what are the changes you've done. And in this way, this visual interface is kind of really useful from uh, Visual Studio Code that it, you can see line by line. You can do it also on terminal, but um, uh, I would suggest using this because this is much easier to like look at. So after you're done, you can see the uh, changes in, uh, I need to go into the repository. So similarly, if I go back, I can double click and see these changes. You can see it here and you can see it on the command line. On the command line, you just need to do uh, git difference. So you can see the git difference. I've zoomed in a bit. So let me clear this again. So as a next step, uh, uh, the idea would be to stage these changes. So there are two layers um, when you try to commit. First is there are the changes and then you can do a plus here on the right. It will kind of take you to the staged changes. So by staged means that you're, you're ready to commit uh, this specific file under state changes and not here. So the idea is you, you don't need to commit all the files all together at once. So you can commit different state, uh, you can commit uh, even like different files, um, even though you have made changes in a lot more files. So I, I can show that uh, by example later on when I when I try to edit multiple files. But so the idea is you, you need to stage these changes. As I can see, I can use it a visual interface to do it. 
otherwise you can do you can do git add uh, the file so this will essentially take this two stage changes uh, if there are multiple files you can always do git add dot so it will add all the files which are in the folder so once you have the stage changes then you can do a commit so here the way you do it is you do a git commit and then you need to pass in a message. Usually it's like a one liner. So it's not very complicated for someone to look at. I can add changes in the readme document. After I do and enter, this will comment. Similarly, you can use it through this uh, visual interface. Maybe the next comment, I'll do it through this to explain. So let me press enter to see what happens. All right. So now the comment has happened, right? Currently I've just done a commit. So everything kind of resides locally in this Git repository. So to understand how the Git is kind of maintaining it, let's look into the folder of the source code. So I have a repository folder and then I have a my un, my project, right? The Git project. So if I go into there, there's a hidden folder called .git. So basically the idea is this .git folder is um, having all the references of the head, the master branch, the pointers, the changes you're doing. So it's basically keeping everything in this this single place. It's pretty lightweight uh, in the first place. It's basically adding your changes one by one. So it's using a lot of pointers to kind of achieve that. Uh, not to go into details here, but it's it's actually good to understand like how things are working, how things are being tracked. So the tracking part is being handled within this folder. Moving on, we've done the first commit. Let's do a, a bit more commit um, and see like how a realistic project would look like, right? In the realistic Python project, I need to create APIs, right? That's one of the first things. So I need like the main Python file, which be, which will be called main.py file since it's also like a python based uh, project and it uses uh, external packages pip packages specifically to use the requirements dot txt so once you have added the change you can see these changes being reflected on this source control branch in visual studio code you can also see git status you can check git status git diff to see what's happening so yeah, the, because these are not tracked yet, so you cannot see the diff. So maybe I need to add to the staging to see the differences. So maybe if I double click here, I can see the changes being added. Nothing's being added to the main branch. In requirements, I've added Flask as a, as a, I've added Flask as a requirement, right? So it's a pip package. So yeah, uh, as a first step, um, if you want to commit these changes, the workflow would be in a realistic project, you click on the specific change you've done. Uh, it's not always that you have to commit all the files kind of together. So you need to stage these changes, which is um, um, git add and the file name, like it can be done using git add, or I can just click up, or I can just click a plus button here. It will bring on to the changes. Previously we did through the command line. Let's try to do it through this interface, right? It's much easier to do it through here. So uh, I have added the requirements file, double checking what I've added, and then I need to write a note. So requirements added pip requirement. So yeah, this is how you add a comment and then you do a comment. All right, the second change has been done. So the second comment has been done as well. So realistically, because I'm creating a Python package, let me just copy a few lines of code uh, for Flask app. So let me move back into the main file. I need to add this piece of code and yep, here it's basically I'm creating a very simple flask based route, which returns hello and the name of the route. So as you can see, I've added this piece of code and this should be reflected in the version control as well. On the left, you can see uh, all the changes that are happening, right? So, so maybe I need to commit this as well as flask app created. Okay, so I'm just creating a small Flask app. I can do a comment. Yeah, so it says you want to stage. Yes, because I haven't staged my changes first. So you need to click first plus and it will stage your changes. So as you can see, using stage, you can commit on individual files or even individual lines of code. So yeah, I've seen these changes and then I can commit. All right, so I've committed my changes. Uh, still, everything lives locally. Nothing has been pushed to get uh, GitHub. So everything is in this git branch, which is master essentially. In this master branch, all is being tracked in this .git folder, which is great, right? And then as a next step, because you're developing an app, realistically, you make changes, right? You make changes. For example, I want to add another route to this Flask app because there's a new requirement. I want to say there's another route called buy. Uh, instead of hello, you, now you're going back. It's just, I'm going to say buy. 
So with the another route, I'm gonna add these changes and you need to make sure this function name is different because Flask only takes, takes one function. Yeah, Python in general, right? There is no functional, there's no function overloading. Hello, so it would be by name, right? That's the essential uh, function name. So yeah, these are the changes now I have done again. So let me do this through a command line. Yeah, we are on top. Uh, so you can see there should there are changes on the left. So all, whenever you have changes, you can always double click and see what kind of changes you have there. So you can see only the li line number 9, 10, 11, 12 have been added based on my la latest uh, uh, changes. And then if I move back, I can also do it using, uh, uh, I can also see these using uh, the command line, which is first I do git status to see what files, what are the files which have changed. And then once you are ready, uh, you can do git commit m added a new by route all right so of new uh, the new commit has been done right so we have done all these different commits already so this is realistically how a project would look like and as a next step after all these commits have been done you need to push these changes on to the uh, server right it's currently it's on a local the idea is there's a central server in place, there's a cloud in place where this project would reside. So you can always pull this project from anywhere in the world. So yeah, as that step, it's very simple to do. Uh, to push all these changes onto the server, you need to do a git push. So once you do a git push, you need to allow to sign in, like you need to do a sign in using this. Uh, in case you would have done SSH, uh, the push wouldn't have asked for anything else. So yeah, but let me do an author authorization of on the Visual Studio code. Yeah, and I need to authenticate using my phone. I have approved on my mobile phone. Let's see how it happens. All right, so we are being redirected. All right, looks good. Now we are logged in and we have committed to this branch and all the changes have been pushed which is great news. Uh, we kind of reached quite far in the tutorial already. Like this is like one of the main things you do with virtual control. So moving on, let's quickly check out what has been done on the uh, server so far. So if I refresh this, I can see all the new files being placed here. You can see there's a read readme file, there's a main file, there's a requirement file. So yeah, this is what I was showing, like all these commits have been done. And on the, on the right, you can see the different comments like I just did it back. So you can basically track things in time, like across time. So this is all these comments have been done by me. There's an init initial commit I did like uh, yesterday because I started filming this yesterday. And then I'm, I'm doing these changes one by one. So as you, can see, there's, as you can see, there's a history of the changes which are happening in point of time. You can see these changes in the readme document were happened like three, 34 minutes ago. Uh, you can click on these changes and see the exact change you've done. Like this is, this is actually kind of really useful uh, when developing real life projects uh, using code. So you can see all these different changes. With every change, there's a commit. With a commit, there's an ID assigned. So there's ID, which is this. So this is basically the ID kind of assigned. And one thing to note: all these changes have been done on the on a single branch, which is you only have like one branch, which is the main branch. Next comes off branches specifically when you're building projects uh with multiple pre people you need branches you can consider branches as like the tree in branches branches are like as i mentioned before are incredibly lightweight so they are basically pointers pointing to a specific commit if you have certain specific improvements in the project if you are developing one small feature the idea is you kind of create this branch to develop this feature developing like this new feature you, you kind of create a new branch to achieve that. And then later, once that feature has been developed, you merge this branch back into your main branch. Let's also try to understand this a bit more visually on how like branch branching works in Git. And then we need to see like how this merge of branches kind of work. You can see on the diagram, you have a single uh, branch main, which we're kind of developing uh, from scratch. And there's one commit C0 and the second commit at C1. And the main is kind of pointing at the C1, right? So this is the main branch. Um, so the idea is I create a new branch. I call it a uh, new image. So basically once there's a new branch, uh, it's called new image. Now both of them are kind of pointing to the same branch. So now that you have created a new branch, commit on to 
this specific new branch. So you need to do checkout of that new branch. Um, and then you do a git commit. Uh, for example, in real world, let's try to see, like we are adding a new feature. So I'm creating a new route uh, within this API, which returns the name of the person with the latest current date time. So I need to develop this new feature. So to do that, instead of like me adding these changes, like as, as I did before, uh, the best practice would be to kind of create a new feature branch. That's what we call it. So in this, this case, this new feature branch is new image. Then you check out to the new feature branch. Basically you come at the new branch and then you start committing. So after you check out to the new branch, I've started committing to this new branch. So the main is kind of already there. So main, main does, hasn't changed. The, your new branch is, has new changes and new comments. Now that we've seen things visually, let's try to build it on code. So let me try to check out a new branch first. So you can use it, you can do it through your graphical interface, create a new branch. Uh, for me, I kind of prefer doing the, the command line route. So I can do a git check out and this is how you create a new branch. So the dash B and you need to add a, a, a branch name, right? So usually it's like a feature branch. So I can add a feature, add date time hello route. So this is basically a feature I'm describing using this branch. So all the changes I will do for this new feature would be in this branch. So it won't be in the main. So I'm checking out this branch. All right, so I've checked out into this branch. Uh, on down below, you can see this has changed. Instead of pointing to the main branch, now I'm at a, um, a different branch. You can see it's pointing to the same um, commit right now. But let me try to add a new feature, right, which I'm trying to build. So I need to build a new route which returns a date time. So hello with date time. All right. Uh, so to build this hello with date time, I need to also, uh, I need to also import date time. From date time, like I need to import, a, I need to use a package from date time, import date time. I need to return the current date timestamp. So like my preferred way of doing is using a F string. So F, uh, hello, name, uh, thank you for checking us out at the date time dot now. So it's a bit of a bit of a longer sentence. Let me delete this. So now I made this added this new feature. So instead of like on only a single route, I added a feature with a new route, which returns a date time with hello. So and this is all in good, right? You've added this feature. You're in the latest branch. So the next step, logical step, is to commit your changes into this new branch. So I can see the, the, by double clicking these. This is the new change I've kind of added in my project. This is a new feature I've added and I need to make sure these changes have, are added. So first I need to add this, stage these changes. I, I'm staging these changes and then I can do a git commit. So I, yeah, as you can see, like you, you can see that I'm using both the features all together. I, this is my personal preference. Um, I think with time you will be able to like realize which one works for you best, right? So one thing to note, this new feature branch only resides in my local Git project. It's still not there because the GitHub server does not know if it has been created. So it's, everything is like, like right now local. As the next step, I need to push these changes into the GitHub server. So let me re reassure you that it's still not there. You can see this, if I refresh, uh, there's still only a single branch called main. So the new branch hasn't been added yet. So I need to go back. I need to push these changes to the upstream uh, remote server. So Git push. If I do, and it's gonna throw an error. It's gonna show me, let me do it again. If I do git push, it's gonna say git, it's gonna show me that you need to push and set upstream and to the branch. So you need to provide like which branch on the server side you need to create. So basically this helps me create the branch on the server side, on the GitHub side, and then push those changes. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this, and it's gonna push. All right, so the feature has been pushed, which is good, right? Uh, feels good to create new features in your project. So you can see new branch has been created, <coughs> uh, which is great, right? You've made some changes, you've created a new feature, 
now your feature resides into another branch. So for example, if your project is uh, deployed at a production level at some website, it's running on this main branch. So nothing has changed for it. So everything kind of resides here. And uh, as a next step, you need to kind of merge these changes. There's two options on merging these changes. You can do a git merge. <coughs> you can do a git merge, which, which happens locally. And then you can push the changes back there. But uh, the best practice I've seen so far uh, when you're doing a when you're developing a real life project, right, uh, is to kind of send a pull request, and that's when the next topic comes in. So before collaboration, which is like sending pull requests, let me let me sh show a few more things. Good thing about using branches also is you can work on multiple features in multiple time, right? So for example, this is one of the features I've added. Uh, probably some other guy who's using this project needs to add another feature, which says create a new API, which returns by with the date time, right? Basically, this is a new feature being asked for a developer to do. So instead of he committing everything on my feature branch or even in the main branch or development branch, the idea is kind of you create another feature branch. So that developer would create a new feature branch for himself. So for example, if there's a new feature to be added, the, the new person would have to basically go to the main branch and do a checkout. Get checkout branch B and this would be feature feature add to to uh, uh, let me move this here so not to the hello route but to the buyer route all right so i've created a new feature branch which basically make these adjustment to the buyer route so as you can see, currently I'm at this branch. You can see the other changes are not reflected here. It's just the older changes. So there's no route with the date time. So I added a buy, uh, buy with date time route. So I need to return buy, buy name, uh, current time is and after you're done importing date time you need to pass in no no i need to do from date time import because there's a package called date time and there's a, a, a another library to call date time so you need to do date time dot now so yeah now this new route has been created same same very similar approach new feature branch new feature has been committed i will stage it and i will add I did new feature with buy buy with date time name. All right, I've added this new comment. I can go ahead and comment. As a next step, I need to git push, and then it's gonna again tell tell me that you cannot push it. So you need to push it upstream by creating a new branch. So I can just copy and paste this. So yeah, this has now created another branch which is good, right? Uh, like you're making progress. <laughs> so let me refresh and I can see two branches are there, right? So basically one person is working on one branch, the other person work is working on another branch. So now comes in the collaboration part. So how you kind of, how people can collaborate. <coughs> so the key thing to note is you need to use pull requests to kind of collaborate on these features. Basically you collaborate and send people your pull requests, like basically like a code review. You can think of it as a code review. These are the changes I made onto this branch and I want you to see what changes I made. Uh, if there is any improvement, definitely add a comment, something like that. So let's do pull requests as part of our plan because first feature was around um, feature add date time, hello route. Let's try to compare and pull and pull and make a pull request. So the idea is I'm, I'm mer merging on the one main branch. So everything kind of comes together in the branch, branch branch. You should try to understand that. Maybe there's one more layer in actual uh, development that there's another development branch before the main branch where everything's kind of collated together on a single place. So you can see uh, uh, while, while creating, I'm sending a pull request, I can assign a reviewer. Like I want to see like, hey, my teammate, please review my changes. For now, it should be me. Uh, I cannot... I cannot add myself, but usually you add a re reviewer. You can assign, you can add labels. So yeah, um, then you added things. Uh, you need, you can leave a comment. So this can be as descriptive as you want. Right? You, basically, this is a space for you to collaborate with your peers. So yeah, 
as soon as I can send a pull request, uh, they will see, they'll get a notification and they'll have to review and accept and like ask for changes and whatnot. So as you can, as I'm trying to commit, to create a pull request, I can see what commits I'm trying to push from this branch and this main. So as you must have realized, uh, even though the, we have done so many commits so far, but all of those commits were kind of done in main. So you need to realize like main has been at a stage so far and I'm just adding a, basically a Delta feature. Like there's a Delta code I'm adding to add this new feature. So going down, you can see one commit was done uh, with this route. I've added these three, four lines. Like I've added the date time import. I've added, uh, I've added these four lines of code, which is basically a new, new route and, and the functionality of returning uh, the name with the date time now. So yeah, this is the way you kind of create a pull request and collaborate with your peers. So I will click go on and kind of create this pull request. So I, I've kind of created this pull request. Now the reviewer can come in and they will see the same uh, setup as I'm seeing right now. They can see the commits I've done. They can see the file changes I've done. And as a person, they can always point to like, uh, like and ask for requests or changes to do like they, if I, they want me to improve on stuff. For example, as a good step, uh, as a best practice, I need to add a doc string to your, to your function. So yeah, so uh, you would need, I need to like, add a doc string basically that other person would come in like add a doc string and you can basically uh, st start a review of the project. So please uh, add a doc string uh, and then this person will like uh, ask me to change and then I need to go back and kind of do these changes and push the commit again. Like, after like I fix everything, I can make those changes, commit it again, those will be reflected here. Basically the person can uh, approve the changes and then you can merge the branch. So this is how it goes. So moving back to the pull request and all the pull requests are kind of in this tab. So you can see this pull request coming in and um, usually they, there's a condition of pulling like being approved by at least one person. You can add that condition. For now, let's just pull. Let me just merge. So yeah, everything looks okay. I can do a merge. All right, so the, the changes have been merged into the master branch, which is nice to know. You can also delete this branch, but let me just keep it for the sake of it. Uh, like usually the feature branch that are not being used later on can be deleted, right? Otherwise, even though they don't sp take space, it's, it becomes like really cumbersome when it's a big project. So you need to keep upkeep the project with all of this stuff. The one of the features has been added. So going back to the main branch, you can see a new feature has been added and you can also see comment, right? Init feature date time route with hello. So this is the latest feature added 30 minutes ago. So these, the changes were done 30 minutes ago, only in this file, only in this file, the changes were done. You can see the comment also, you, you, you can see the pull being done. You can see the pull, uh, the feature also. So yeah, this is how it's being done. Let me move on to the main.py to show you the changes. All right, so you can see the main production branch, which has been deployed, which can be deployed has the latest code now. So this is how you kind of collaborate. So let's go through this cycle one more time to try to understand it further, right? To try to replicate a real world scenario. So yeah. Uh, uh, and like you can see that I can create a pull request by this. This is a new feature, the by feature with date time name. I need to append this as well, right? So similarly add a reviewer and do a create pull request. All right, so now I have created a, the second pull request. There is a conflict. So let's try to resolve the conflict. Click on resolve conflict. You can do it on locally or you can do it um, both ways. So you can see two things are being done um, to, to merge. One is coming from feature add date time by hour. Uh, another is already there. Like the, the older version is already there. Basically we want both of them together. So basically I will keep both uh, because they're coming from two different branch and you need to tell the final main branch that, hey, these are the both of the features I want to use. In case there's a there's an overwrite, maybe you, you want to delete this function and then remove that. But currently in the requirements, we have two different features coming in and we, are, we have to include both. So I need to do it mark as resolved and do a commit. So, so the commit has been done. It can be merged now. Everything has been done. Things have been reviewed. Usually this person, other person usually reviews it and approve it. For now, let's go for it and merge the pull request. Confirm merge. 
All right. Uh, the merge has been done. Like two feature branch were used to do a merge back into main. And this is how it looks like. Like the final project has been built. Both of the routes, the newer routes have been added, which is how the collaboration should work, right? Like feels nice to kind of uh, uh, see in action, right? I hope this would somewhat give you a clarity, right? This should give you clarity on like the whole uh, <clears throat> process of kind of building a project. It, I hope it was really helpful for you to watch. And if it added value to you, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, this is it for this video. See you in the next one.